Hey guys and girls, it's Barbie bitch. I'm going to be doing a. I'm doing a tutorial, and that's why I can't speak because I don't do tutorials, and everything is backwards on my camera. So my left is my right, and my right is my left. Okay, what I'm doing? I'm doing my hair. I am two-toning my hair. I've done it before. Dark underneath, blonde on top. Um, and let me just show you what you're going to need. And then we'll get started. And you can learn how to do your hair like Barbie. So anyway, you're going to need two pairs of gloves. One pair for the dark color. One pair for your dark, for your blonde color. Jesus, God Almighty, can't even talk straight. All right, you're gonna need a brush. I prefer this brush over. See, everything's backwards. I prefer this brush over any kind of brush there is. This is a detangler brush. They had it on, as seen on TV, for 19.99, and I got it for like four dollars free shipping off eBay and this thing is amazing I've, I've had to keep my daughter's hair short because she just doesn't she doesn't like brushing her tangled hair so I bought two I got one for me and I got one for her and now we can let her hair grow out because she uses this okay baby wipes oh, upside down baby wipes for any little mess that you may have a t-shirt or a, a, a setting people wrap a towel around them. I, uh, I can't handle the stuff up there and you know my throat. So I wear a t-shirt. As a matter of fact, here. This is my I've been abducted by alien shirt. <laughs> and all I got was this lousy t-shirt. <laughs> Imagine that. Alright. Next you're going to need dark hair color and light hair color. So today, I have to put my glasses on for this, I'm using Soft Sheen by Carson and it's brown sugar, dark and lovely, fade resistant, rich conditioning color. Now when you look at this box, you're going to see, which, wait, there it is. You'll see an African American lady, very pretty lady by the way. Um, this is color for an African American, African American lady. However, I've learned that this does not ruin my hair the way that white girl uh, color does. Um, this just, and the color stays a lot longer. I'm going to mix it though with Revlon. And this is a dark, soft brown. Whoops. Sorry, camera's backwards. And what I'll do is I'll just mix these two together using a 20 volume cream which I got it oh, I hate this backwards camera I got it at Sally's Beauty Supply and it's 20 volume 20 volume in 10 or 20 volume uh, developer cream is good for depositing color on your hair I prefer the 20 because it deposits the color a lot quicker than the 10 but if you have really super damaged hair and you're trying to put a color on your hair a darker color, not a lighter color, because this is really not a lightener. Um, I would use volume 10. The next thing I have is my Super Strength Powder Lightener by Quick White. And this is one pound. And I got this, again, from Sally's Beauty Supply. And you're not going to use all that. You're only going to use, like, maybe four or five tablespoons of it. I will be mixing that with level 40 volume cream. The reason I'm using level 40 is because I want to lift the color. I want my hair to go lighter for the top. So I'll use a, a, a 40. They have this in a 50, but unless you own a beauty salon or have an account with them, you can't get it because it will ruin your hair if you don't know what you're doing. Even the 40, if you don't know what you're doing, it's going to ruin your hair. All right, so I have a mixing bowl. Everything's backwards, sorry. 
one for blonde, one for bleaching, and the other one for color. I also have this little handy dandy uh, brush, which I use this. It's actually a makeup brush. It's really soft. See it? I use this for mixing my colors. Um, you can actually buy a mixing brush at Sally's. I'm going to have to flip this camera, sorry. You can, have, you can actually get the, the hair mixing brush at Sally's Beauty Supply or Walmart or wherever you go to get your hair set. And it's really, it's like a hard brush, mixing brush. And it kind of looks like this. I think it's a little bit more square. I prefer this because it just, to me, it seems like it makes the uh, developer uh, more smooth. And I also like using it for applying. I have two of these, by the way. Um, what else do you need? I had a hair clip. Ah, hair clip. Hair clip. Or hair clips. Some people like having these rubber bands if they want to section different parts of their hair. And then bobby pins, which actually these are too big. Bobby pins. I don't know if you can see them or not. Um, for pinning your hair back. I've been doing my own hair um, for years. My sister and my niece own a salon, and um, those are my go to girls. Uh, so, okay, we've got everything. So, oh, okay, so let's just go ahead and start. My hair's a hot mess because I did the white girl afro over the holiday. So, um,. You're not supposed to wash your hair right before you lighten it or color it or anything. Um, your hair should be dry. And as you can see, my roots are showing. See how, look at this brush. Just, wow. It just like cuts through that like butter. And my hair, it is straight as a board. I know it doesn't look like it in this video, but it is straight as a board. So anyway, what I'm going to be doing is... I'll, basically, I'll take all this on top and about a quarter of an inch around the back. I'm pull the sides down. I gotta flip this camera; it's driving me freaking crazy. Okay, so I flipped the camera. Everything should you should be able to see everything in the correct direction this time. But anyway, um, last time, oh my God, look how much has grown out already. So my hair is naturally blonde, believe it or not. That's my natural color, which is like a sandy blonde. In the summertime, it turns almost white. Um, the last time I did it, I wanted more of a darker tone, so I have a lot of dark here. Um, this time, my husband likes blonde hair. I'm going to be doing pretty much this whole section right here. You can see it's blonde. Um, I'm going to be doing that all in blonde. So I'm going to wrap that up because I don't want to get any dark color on it. And then the majority of the back, except for about a quarter of an inch, I'm going to start right here, which I don't know if you can see how much longer. So, but you just go right around with your thumbs and pin it up because you don't want it to. fall back down when you're dyeing your hair black. So basically I'm just going to be doing about this much. Oops. Didn't pin it very good, did I? About this much as the black. Jeez Louise, my hair just wants to keep falling down. So anyway, um, I will go ahead and start mixing my stuff. I don't want to force you guys to sit through this and watch the whole video because I don't know how to speed up my videos. God, my hair's getting long too. Like, and that's like to the back of my back. Anyway, so anyway, um, wait, I'm coming back with a tutorial. I'm not going to force you to wait. I will start mixing, getting my hair properly up. 
and uh, I'll come back and do a little bit of the application for you guys so you can just kind of see what, what's going on. Oh, by the way, if you don't know what you're doing, don't do it. Ask a professional. Sally's Beauty Supply is great when it comes to getting information on how to do stuff. <laughs> Go to a beauty shop and they're going to say, oh, you're going to ruin your hair if you do it that way. Let us do it. And, you know, I'm not paying upwards of $50 to $200 for somebody to two-tone my hair when I can do it myself. Oh my god, I just realized I have no fucking makeup. No freaking makeup on. Oh my gosh, Becky looked at her butt. Okay, so okay, I've so already got my. Right. It's backwards again. Sorry, I can't change the camera. Um, my quick white powder already in a bowl. It's very finely sifted. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's very fine. And this is not an exact science for me. Um, like I said, I've been doing this for a long time, so I pretty much can get my mixture straight. Um, I would say don't do this unless you have specific instructions on how to do it. This is just the way I do my hair. I am not responsible for yours. So I'm starting with my 40 volume cream which I'll mix in with the bleach until it starts to get pretty liquefied and then I'll start mixing. And you have to be really careful with this powder because it's very loose and you can breathe it in. And as you can see, it's like flopping everywhere all over my table. So anyways, once you get it mixed is when you start the application process, which will be a little bit because I have a lot in here to mix. Um, something I forgot to mention is after you lift your color, your lift your uh, blonde it's actually going to come out more of a like a depending on your hair color to start with like mine will come out almost white so I have um, the beautiful color silk um, number three which is ultra light blonde and it's backwards I'm sorry after I do my lift I'll put that color on it to make it a blonde, you know, really pale blonde, and it won't look white or semi white or whatever. So, yeah, and as so you, you can, can see, yeah, I have my gloves on, um, which I should have told you in the beginning. As soon as you start messing with any of these chemicals, um, make sure you have gloves on because they, they can burn your hands. Um, this is pretty much the consistency that I want. For the lightning. Something else I forgot to tell you, which I do, I, I don't know whether they do it at the salon or not, um, is I put a little bit of my favorite conditioner, which this is Derm Organic. It's not tested on animals and it's backwards. I'm sorry. I'll put all the links down in the bottom. Um, but this is enriched with rice carotene and it's an intensive hair mask. And it's just like conditioner, so I just like to put a couple little drops in there with my bleach. And then I also like to use my Derma Organic, um, I can't even read it, it's, it's a leave-in treatment. And again, I'll put the descriptions down on the bottom. Um, these are not tested on animals. And I got a hair in my mouth. Crap. Where is it? Okay. So again, I'm just going to put a little bit of serum in there. And then I'm going to mix that up really good. And I feel how I have my mouth. Ugh. I hate it when that happens. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we've got this good consistency here. I'm going to start putting it on, which I'm not going to force you guys to sit and watch, but um, just to give you an idea how I do it, I use my handy dandy little brush, and I'm doing this through the computer, so bear with me. I like to do the edges with my brush, um, 
just to make sure I don't get it anywhere it doesn't belong. Um, and once I get the edges done, now I can't see. Uh, then I'll start putting it in using my hands. All right, so I'm good there. I'm good here. Um, also, um, another thing you can do is, especially if this is your first try, which like I said, I don't want to be responsible for what happens to your hair or your head, but if this is your first time or second time and you're just learning how to do this, um, it's a good idea to put like some Vaseline around the edges of your face. Um, it's especially with the bleaching process because it will burn your skin if you're not careful. Um, and honestly, I'm going to say if you're going to do this, um, I would start with like a 20 or a 30, even just for a lift, um, because it, it, there is an exact science to it. I've been doing my hair for a long time, and I just know how to do it for myself. But like if I was to try to do someone else's hair, I would probably screw it up. And I don't want to be responsible for that. Even though I do do some of my friend's hair. Um, who happen to have ungodly amounts of trust in me. So anyway, that's that. I'm going to go ahead and put it all on. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to show you how to put this funny little hat on. Because once you put your lightener on... Um, it, you're supposed to contain it with like some kind of a cap or cellophane or foil or whatever. But I have a nifty trick that I'm going to show you. And it works every time. Oh, hi guys. So, we'll so right back. as you can see, I have all my hair up. I think I got it all covered. Yeah, I did. Um, most people, including the beauty salons, We'll either wrap your hair in um, elastic or some kind of a foil because this stuff, what it does is it heats up in your hair and that's what you want it to do. You want it to, to heat up um, because that's what is activating it and actually bleaching it. What I do is I use a bag because it's so freaking easy. I mean, literally, you just put it over your head get all the air out of it, pull it to the front, and then I twist it, and voila, my head is covered that freaking easily. Cute. No? Okay. So anyway, um, Jesus, that shit, I love me. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to let this process for about 10 minutes and then I'll check on it and then I'll process some more and I'll check on it and I'll process and well, you get the idea, right? Okay. So, um, I will come back after, um, it's gotten to the level of color that I want and show you what it looks like before I take it off, what it looks like after I take it off and then the process of putting on the blonde, 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 and then the dark. So, let's just fast forward through all that. Okay, so I've had it on for about 15 minutes, and it's really warm, and I checked on it, and it has processed. And it looks white to you guys because it still has that stuff on it, but it's time for me to go remove it. And throw this bag away because I'm not going to use it again. I'm going to go rinse this out and I'll be right back. And then we'll put on the pale blonde with a level 20, not 40, because we don't want to burn our hair up anymore. So let me just go rinse this out and I'll be right back. Okay. Ready for the big reveal, I think. Oh, God. Please let there be a God. Let's hope my hair doesn't fall out with the towel. Ah, wow. I told you this brush was amazing. Wow, I like it. I actually like this color. 
I don't think I'm even going to put the pale blonde on it. Because, I mean, the color is almost the same. That's so weird. Cool. I don't have to reprocess my hair. Oh, you can see these little dark spots right here is where I had the dark color before. Uh, maybe I should put the toner on it. Oh, what the hell. Pink hair, blue hair, white hair, gray hair, black hair. Who gives a shit, right? So, okay, yeah. Um, like I said, my hair is straight as a bore. I like it, though. I like this color. I think I do, anyway. Let me turn the light on. Yeah, I do. I really do like it. Okay, so while I like this color, I'm not going to put the um, pale blonde on it because it's pretty much pale blonde. So, my next step is to put the darkener underneath. And let me get all that mixed up and I'll come back. And I just wanted to show you guys. Um, I don't use the bottles because uh, I like using the brush and applying with my hands so I know exactly where it's going but this is the um, the cream developer which is probably a 20 it doesn't tell you in the box so I'm just gonna pour that in right here in this pink bowl and the reason I'm showing you this is because I want you to understand why um, a lot of people end up getting damaged hair when they do their own hair. This is the Fade Resistant Rich Conditioning Hair Color, which is this right here. And it's brown sugar. So I'm mixing that. Oops. Don't do that. So I'm just going to mix that in there. And make sure you have a trash can nearby. Now this is Moisture Rich Moisture Rich moisture rich conditioner which comes with this hair color what I do is I take half of the conditioner in the tube and I mix it with the color um, so even though you've got a lot of harsh stuff going on your hair you will have a little something in there um, to help condition it as you're coloring it. So um, I just wanted to show you guys that and um, I'll be back in a few minutes. I'm going to go ahead and apply this off camera because I really need to be in a mirror and not using my laptop cam. So um, yeah, give me a few minutes and I'll come back and um, show you what it looks like with the underneath dyed and then um, process time. Okay, so this is the final yeah. product. Um, it doesn't look blended right now because it's still wet. But um, I actually, um, <laughs> I actually went like this when I had the dark color on and got it mixed in with the blonde. So I ended up having to recolor just the top. And normally the bottom is, it's not really dark. It looks dark in the camera. Let me see if this works any better. It's not really that dark. It's not that much different than the regular shade, even though it looks a lot darker in the camera. It's really not. Um, I would have left this on longer and let it get almost jet black, but because I accidentally mushed it into my blonde hair, I freaked out and didn't want to totally have to bleach out all of my hair because um, it's just not good for you. But anyway, again, I just used the bleaching powder from Sally's and um, 40 volume uh, developer to lift the color and then I just used the Revlon and um, that other box that I showed you. I'll, sh I'll put all that stuff down in the description. So I'm just going to blow dry it really fast and come back and show you what it looks like and then I'll actually put some makeup on and show you that I actually look like a human and not an alien. Hi guys. Okay so yeah um, it's not completely dry but um, for the most part it is. You can still see because it's a little crinkly and my hair is really straight. But anyway, this will give you an idea of what it looks like. And um, I just had my son take some pictures that I'll be attaching to the video after I put some makeup on. Um, 
and I have some makeup tutorials that I have to do too, so I'll just kind of leave links down in the bottom. Don't forget to subscribe either over there, there, down there, or up there, down in the description. So that's my two-tone hair. Um, I like it. I'll let you know more. Okay, I'm getting ready to do some reviews on some makeup that I got, and um, I thought I would just give a little plug out to this company that I don't seem to know the name of right now, but um, these are advertised on TV. They're for your hair, and I'll show you how to do it in a minute, to roll your hair into a bun. They're advertised on TV. I've seen on TV. I think you get three in a box for $19.99. I got this for $0.99 cents free shipping on eBay, and let's just get to it because it's so easy to do. So your hair's long, obviously, if you're wanting to put it in a bun. I just pull mine back, and I like my bend to be up high. I don't know why, I just do. And then take your rubber band, and again, I'm still pulling my bend up really super high. All right. So I got my hair in a ponytail. What you do is that they're kind of flexible. They've got these little, I don't know if you can see them or not, little teeth. Yeah, there you can see them right there. On them, so what I do is I put the teeth part down and I pull my ponytail through. And then what you do is, don't get it caught, number one. You just pull this out. To <coughs> almost the end of your ponytail, not completely, and then you roll it. Just roll it down. And then, it has a little, on the ends, I should have showed you already, but I didn't for some reason. It has a little clasp, and then you just pull your hair around it. You can't see it from here, dang it. Anyway, you pull your hair around it, and you have a perfect little bun. So, that's that. And you can get that on eBay. Just look for bun holder or something like that. Okay, Pretty so sure I'm getting ready much. to do some airbrush foundation. Um, this is Nutmeg by Denaire. This is a sample bottle. And then also I'm going to mix the Nutmeg with dark golden beige. Because um, I have really, really, really fair skin. And you can probably tell I've already put a little bit of concealer on um, before. So I'm just going to put four drops of the nutmeg because you need about a total of eight drops for um, full coverage. And then I'm going to do four drops of the dark golden beige. All right. So. I have my air compressor, which is an Aero Pixie, and there goes my phone. And I'm going to turn that up, and I don't know if you can see it or not, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to back bubble what's in there. And the way you back bubble is you hold your finger over the nozzle, and you just pull back. And what that does is it just blends your color. Um, so you don't have some that's going to be darker or lighter. So I'm going to do a little bit of this and then, who is that? Just write back and say yes. Um, I'm just going to do, I'm not going to do like a full tutorial. Um, I just want to do a little bit on how I do my foundation. And this is my Aero Tan Pixie and it's at... 15. Air pressure 15. So I just go around in a circle. And like if it feels like it's getting too thick, you can back bubble it again, which helps it come out. And you make sure that you keep your eyes closed and you want to move your air machine, machine around in circles. I'm just doing a light cover today because 
I've got so many reviews to do. And this is, it's not really even a review. I bought this product. Um, I actually got it on eBay. eBay, eBay um, a while back. And I love it. I don't know why it's coming out shiny. Maybe it's the golden. But um, a really quick little thing I want to show you or tell you about is you should always keep your glasses handy, number one. Um, but, like, I have a double chin because I am overweight. And a little trick that I learned is darker colors. Ah, perfect. Darker colors down here. If you shade with that color, with a, a different color, which this is Orchid Plum, um, and I don't even rinse the the cup out. I use, you know, what foundation was just in there that I was using. And first of all, you got to shake it up really good. And I'm going to do three drops of Daenerys Orchid Plum. And that's going to be for shading underneath my neck, which I think it helps. I think it, the shadowing, like, you may not see it right now, but after I do it and then I have my hair down, I can tell a big difference. And I'm going to put my air pressure to 20. So again, you're going to back bubble. And then I just go around my jawline. And then I also do a little bit here around the hairline because it does make um, your face Center, and then I spread it off into the neck area. And when you have your pressure up this high, you're going to get a lot more product out. And like, oh, I love the smell of this stuff. And like, so anyway, like, to me it looks a little too dark, like in the in the laptop. But I have a mirror over here, and um, what I do is I take this. I got this on Google, I mean, <laughs> eBay, everything's eBay, uh, 99 cents, free shipping, um, and this is what they call, they also call this an airbrush, I don't know why, but you dip it in water and it, it and it, uh, becomes buoyant and, and fluffs up once you put the water in it, and then once I've done my mascara, just, I mean my mascara, God, thank God, I'm not getting paid for this one, um, once I've done my foundation, I just take this wet, airbrush sponge and go around like that. Make sure you get in your eyes really good. And there's another trick that I'm going to tell you guys about, but I'm going to have to wait a minute because I have to get everything in order because I'm OCD right now and nothing is in order. So, um, I'll come right back and we'll, actually, you know what? Do I have my powder out? Yeah, I do. This is um, JoJo's Loose Powder. JoJo's Loose Powder, and it's backwards. She can get it at Walgreens or Walmart or whatever. And it's translucent, but it has translucent. But it has... Ah! Here, do it this way. It has a shine to it. I don't know if you can see that or not. But what I do is um, I just take my brush and dab it in. And then, like, I want to. I still like the shine. I just don't like an oily shine. And I don't know why I have an oily shine because I have excessively dry skin, which is weird, if you ask me. And then also you definitely want to get down in your neck area where you um, shaded it in, you know, to make your face look a little bit thinner. So I think that's good. Okay, so um, that was a quick review or tutorial on Denier Airbrush Foundation. And I think we'll come back and I will teach you how to mix some of your own eyeshadows um, so you don't have to pay a friggin' fortune for them. And um, those work in all... Uh, 
all the airbrush machines that I've used anyway. So that's shine right here. And um, so yeah. Again, you can you know you can go darker or lighter. The the formulas that you buy, colors, makeups that you buy from Denier from to me are a little pricey. Um, I got a really good deal on these. I got like forty in a bag for like twenty dollars or something like that. Um, but they're just point five milligrams, and it's like eight or nine drops a bottle and that's that's not it because you need you need at least two drops you know for if you're doing three different eyeshadows you need two drops for the inner eyes and then anyway you get you get my drop. okay so this anyway, is just a I'll little quick a tutorial minute. on how to make your lips look bigger mine are big because I'm a big girl um well no that's not true I mean I used to be really skinny and I still had big lips but anyway um we all love bigger pouty your lips so I use, um, you can use any eyeshadow, eyebrow pencil, um, or lip liner pencil or whatever. This is from Wet n Wild and this can be used for lips or for eyeshadow. I don't know if you can see the color or not. And I still have hair dye on my hand. But anyway, this is how I do my lips and hair everywhere. I just line them. Just. <laughs> oh my god. Uh -huh. There you go. Okay. So I just line my lips. I don't. There's like no perfect. I don't follow a perfect line. Because there's nothing perfect about me. But anyway. um, And then at the Cupid's bow. Which is this peak right here, your two peaks. I go just above it on each side and then down. And again, it looks retarded right now. But after I put the lipstick on, and I'm just doing this really fast so you guys don't have to sit there and watch me do it. This is just a hot matte pink that I got from Wet n Wild. 99 cents, what do you expect? But it's a pretty color. So, I just go up to my Cupid's bow and down and around. And I go to the corners of my lips and then on the bottom because I have this piercing here, I'll show you how to get around that. Go ahead and do that side and then if you have a piercing you can do a little bit of the other side but mostly you want to put more lipstick or lip gloss or whatever a little bit thicker on whatever side it is that you have your piercing because you're going to have to rub your lips together so that's how I make my lips look a little bit better. I actually have a limp, limp. <laughs> I actually have a lip plumper coming in the mail for a review. It's that I don't remember the name of it, but anyways, that you stick it to your mouth and you go and it sucks your lips out. And the the idea is to suck the blood to your lips. And they say after two or three weeks your lips actually stay that way but you notice a dramatic change when you use it for the first two hours your lips stay full and plump so I'm like so super excited about doing that so anyway that's how I do my lipstick and I'm gonna come back and airbrush some blush okay so I'm going to airbrush um, some bronze I can't see bronze rose bronze rose that's going to be my cheek color and you know to outline my face so um, if you're using an airbrush like I am you if you're going from a light color to a darker color you don't have to worry about you know cleaning out the airbrush because the darker color will come through if you're going from a dark to a light then you do need to clean it out
So, anyway, you want to shake up your blush, which is Denaire Bronze Rose, which is between like a peachy and a pink color, a little bit darker, so you have to be really careful with this. And I'm going to do one, two, three drops. I'm going to turn my air compressor on to 15. And you guys will be able to see it better than me. But what you're going to do is you're just going to rock the cradle. When you rock the cradle, when you want product to come out, you'll rock and push down. Go. Really pretty color. It's really light. And if you go, if you're too high on your um, compressor, don't worry about too much product. Like if it feels like it's getting clogged, you want to bubble it a little bit, back flow it. But I don't feel like enough product coming out, so I'm going to turn it up to 20. There you go. Like I said, the darker colors are great for shadowing. So if you have anything in your airbrush, after you do your blush, then just go around and do some shadowing if you want to. All right. So, I'm okay, I'm shadow. going to use Daenerys Barely Pink. Um, when you start with your eyeshadow, you should always put your lighter colors on first. Um, and darker colors on second in my opinion anyways that's the way I do it and I'm gonna airbrush the barely pink on but I have some uh, metallic colors that I want to tell y'all about um, so I'm gonna be brushing those on but I wanted to show you really quick how you airbrush your highlighter on and you can actually you know before I start doing that because I always skip this step and forget about it, and then I go, oh, no, I forgot to do it. Oh, here it is. Before you put your eyeshadow on, you need some kind of a primer, something to make it stick, even though it's airbrush eyeshadow. So what I do is I use, woo, and it's going to be backwards. Um, this is Color Tattoo 24-hour, and this is the pearl backwards sorry guys but it's color tattoo by i studio 24 hour and it's number five too cool which is it's like a pearly white so normally i use a brush but i don't maybe i do no i don't have one handy at the moment so i'm just going to do this with my finger really fast and you just need a little tiny bit and you want to go over your whole eye including your brow just a little tiny bit and I'll do the other one I like putting a little bit because it is shiny I like putting a little bit extra in the corner of my eye and it just kind of makes it pop. I don't know why it just does. Okay, so I got that done. All right, so we're gonna go back to our airbrush, and this is Daenerys Barely Pink, and it's really barely pink. So I'm just gonna do one, two, three drops into the airbrush. And we're going to set my compressor at 5. The reason you want to set a lower pressure on your compressor if you're airbrushing your eyes is because if it's any higher than that, it feels like you're sandblasting your eye. So that's why. So again, I always back bubble. Even if I'm not mixing colors, I always back bubble. So I'm going to use my mirror while you guys can see me through the computer. So I just start out rocking the cradle. See how I rock the cradle? This. And when I want product, I pull it all the way back. 
and I like my brow in the corner of my eye because she's super bright. I just, I don't know why. I just do. I don't know if you can see the difference between the two eyes, but I'm going to the other right now. The rocking technique that I'm using, it's really hard to mess it up. I mean, you can still mess it up, obviously. But. And I'm out. So, I think I have enough on anyway. So, let me go ahead and turn that off. I'm probably going to go ahead and put a darker color on and then just foil over it. So... What color? I have some. Daenerys got beautiful colors, but I have a little trick that I'll show you guys of another time um, to make your own airbrush cosmetics because Daenerys is so expensive. Actually, you know what? I can show you right now. After I get this top off here. Okay. That didn't taste good. Okay. I mixed up some of my own color. These are, um, ugh, now I get purple everywhere. These are tattoo inks. And I don't know the name, the, the brand, because um, I got them on eBay and it's written in Chinese or Japanese or something. This is a purple color. And I bought these little containers. They're clear when you get them. And I get little beads. You can hear. Get some like little ball bearings, three or four per bottle. And I take the color that I want. I put it in this bottle. And I take a mixture of glycerin and witch hazel or rose water I use. Most people just use sterilized water. Um, I like using the witch hazel and the rose water um, because it dries faster. But um, this is a mixture of witch hazel and glycerin. So what I do is I just put my color into this bottle. So it's one part color, three parts glycerin and witch hazel or rose water or sterilized water. So I'm going to... What am I going to do? No. Oh. I've already got my color mixed up here. So, I want to do a foiling effect, but I want to put a little bit of color on first. So, I'm going to put one, two, three, three and a half drops of the purple. And remember, I'm going from light pink to dark purple, so um, I don't have to clean out my airbrush. All right. So, I'm going to back double on this because we want to make sure that everything is mixed up really good in there. Alright, so, this is me. I'm just going to do the corner of my eyes and maybe just a little bit right in here. And we're going to use the rocking technique. And you can see how fast that color comes out. And it's so vibrant. I love that color purple. This is more of a party color. So now I have the purple where I want it. Okay, so I don't know if you can see it. 
see it as good as I can. But anyway, I have the purple on. And now I'm going, this will be my first time I'm going to be doing it with you guys. Um, I'm going to be doing what they call foiling. And basically it's a metallic color um, over your eyeshadow or you could just use it by itself um, as a color because they do come in different colors. Um, so let me just clean out my airbrush and I'll come right back and we'll start doing. Okay, so while the foiling effect didn't go the way I planned, I had bought these new products. There's a total of eight, and I got them from the craft store, and they're called Perfect Pearls, and they come in, like, some really amazing colors, um, and they're really metallic-y, real shiny, and very pretty, but they're not the foil effect that I wanted, so I went ahead and just put it on, and um, here we are. I, I like my eyes to look big, and I have small eyes. So, what I do is I take a little bit of white underneath my eye. Make sure if you're using powder underneath your eye that your brush, your tip of your brush is a little wet because otherwise that stuff will flake off into your eyes. So, I just take a little bit of white under my eye. And I pull it in and down. And, and down. And that does help with making your eyes a little bit darker. So now I need some eyeliner. And I'm not good with the liquid eyeliner. So I'm going to be using probably a gel. This is my gel eyeliner pen. Uh, brush. Brush. Gel eyeliner brush. Where is... Actually, you know what? This is a perfect time to show you some of the stuff that you can do. I have a gel... A gel oh, here it is. This is by MAC. Eyeshadow gel. And I love it. It's not really a gel, but it's nice and moist. And I hardly... I mean, I've had it for three months, and I've hardly ever used any of it. And it's not a powder. It's a gel or whatever. So what I do is I just dab my brush and then I wipe it off and then I take the lid and do like this because this stuff is like super super strong and um, you don't want to put too much on it one time. So I start at the bottom at the corner of my inner eye and got in as far as I possibly can without touching my eyeball and then do it again on the other eye why is it that when we're doing our eye, ma eye makeup mascara eyeliner it's like our mouths are like I don't get that I never could figure out why I do that does anybody else do that? If you do, leave me a message down in the comments. And then also I go on the top eyebrow. I mean, I right there. That part of the eye. And you can do it. Like, I'm not a perfectionist. I just, like, slather it on. You can probably tell. But um, you can do it however far over you want. I don't like the top to go that far over. And you could even pull it out and make it a little bit of a cat eye if you wanted to, which I don't normally do a cat eye, but that's kind of a cat eye. So let's just do this one and bring it in and out a little bit. Let me go ahead and take it to the inside of the eyeliner. See what I mean? And I always bring it down a little bit to give it more of a little bit of a dramatic dramatic look.
But if you put too much on, you're going to look like Catwoman. Which is what I look like right now. Because I'm just not paying attention to what I'm doing. I'm just trying to rush through doing a tutorial. Normally, like, because I have purple eyeshadow on, I would take a purple powder shower, sh shower sh purple shadow powder and I would do like a dark purple eyeliner over top of the black eyeliner but I just don't have time to do a date today um, so the next thing I'm going to do is my uh, my eyelashes and like I have no eyelashes none so I use this amazing product and it's called Double Extend. Again, it's backwards, sorry. And it's made by um, L'Oreal. And it's super, super cool. One end is... This is your volumizer. You put this on your eyes. Um, I have to put on like three or four layers for it to work. And then after you're done, there's your mascara. Um, sometimes I use a different mascara. I have a couple that I like. Um, I like the volumizer. It's one and two, so it actually has one top, which is one, for like your bottom lashes. You put that back on, and then it has another top, like that. I like that one, and then I super duper ruper love... I don't particularly like this mascara. It's uh, NYC Skyrise, but I do love the comb. So I'm gonna start with putting on the um, the process of putting on the lash thickener, and I'll show you what that looks like in just a minute. Um, and then you have to. It takes like five minutes because you have to let it dry. So. I'll start okay, so I don't know. You, you can probably see that my eyelashes are white. Um, that's like my third application, so I'm going to do one more just because I want super, super long lashes. And again, this thing with my mouth, I don't know what that is. I don't know if I'm the only person that does it. And if I am, I don't know why. And you know what? I have totally forgotten uh, <laughs> about putting black mascara over the white and walked out of my house this way one day. Can you imagine? People are looking at me like I was freaking crazy. And I'm like, why are you looking at me like that? And then I get home and my daughter says, Mom, your eyelashes are white. You're getting gray. <laughs> no. Alright, so this is the worst part of doing my makeup. Alright. Alright, so that's pretty thick. Crazy Barbie. Top and bottom is pretty thick. So uh, let that dry and then um I'll come back and put some mascara on. Oh, okay. So, I've already started with the mascara. Um, I, I, I still don't understand why I hold my mouth open when I'm putting on mascara, but I do, and I don't know why. But, um, I almost forgot that I was doing this on video. And that's why my mascara is pretty much already done. I don't know if you can see it or not, but anyway, it makes makes for um some really long lashes. Now I do wear false eyelashes. I have some right here. I actually have hundreds of pairs of these, and I will have to be doing reviews on them because they are products that were sent to me to do a review on. I just don't have time to do that, those reviews today. So, that's pretty much it. I do have a little lipstick trick that I'm going to do, but it'll be in the next video, and I'll attach it to this one, because I did like 
five, six, seven, huh? ten reviews. I haven't done ten reviews. All I did was my foundation, my blush, my mascara, or eyeshadow, eyeliner, mascara. That's five. Lipstick, one. Lipstick, six. Oh my god! I don't have any eyebrows. Should I put eyebrows on? Okay, I think I need to put eyebrows on. Okay, okay so, so I'll be right back and I'll show you how to do that. Even though I did my hair, I am a natural blonde. You can see. You can see my eyebrows are pretty much non-existent. Even there, there's hair there, but there's really not, really not any eyebrow that I can speak of. So, anyways, again, I have a little tiny brush. These are not like anything spectacular. I mean, I got like a pack of twenty different brushes off of eBay for like five dollars. Um, I am the like, I don't like to spend money on myself. I can spend money on anybody else 24-7 all day long, and it doesn't bother me a tad bit. But the minute I spend a penny on myself, I'm like, that's why I buy everything on eBay, because you can't return it, right? But, like, if I go to Walmart and try to buy something for myself, but before I get back to my car, I'm going, I really don't need this. And then I go back in, and I return it, and then I get something for somebody else. But anyway, that's not why you're here. Um, so I have this little brush and there's actually two uh, well there's several ways you can do this um, you can use if, if you want you can use a liquid which I just normally put a little couple drops there and then I dab it on my my brush on it and then I draw my eyelashes or eyebrows on or you can use a powder and I'm using it's called brow fix and there's actually three shadows in it there's a darker a medium and then almost like a, it's almost white actually and that's I think for like making mistakes or whatever but it's a it's brow fix brow kit made by Milani and I don't know if that's Teresa Giadici's daughter from the Real Housewives of New Jersey but the name sounds so familiar so anyways make sure your brush is damp damp dip in a little bit of water tap it on your hand and I always do the medium just get a little bit on your brush and I'm going to try to do this well no I'm not going to I was going to try to do it with just the computer but I can't so I have to use this um, I usually start right here and I go up oh that's a dark dark Ooh, that's too dark way dark anyway um, go up and then I come over to the other side because I'm going to try to make sure that they're even. And I go up like in a, like a straight, because I want to, I like the pointed eyebrow. And then I just spread it out. And like I have this piercing here, so I just go right in between that. It actually lifts it up. I can go right in between it. And then the same with the other side. And it's just like that easy. All of a sudden, I have eyebrows. And I don't usually spend much time, <laughs> can't you tell, on makeup because too much other stuff to do. But like, if you get it too dark, my hefty, defty, um, sponge. <laughs> I take this and I go up. I just pull up that brow with this little sponge. Um, it lightens it up, but not too light. And it also evens it out. So, there you go. Um, and I guess the last thing we're going to do today is a little lipstick trick that I learned. So let me get everything ready and that'll be in the next tutorial. Okay, so I'm going to do this cute little lipstick trick that um, I learned with Perfect Pearls, um, which I actually bought these because I thought they were going to be good for foiling, eye foiling. Um, I just like vibrant, shiny stuff. That's just me. Um, what color is this anyway? This is like a I want to say it's like a burnt orange. Perfect. 
copper, copper, perfect copper made by perfect pearls and it comes in a set of four different colors um, and you can get these at um, just about any craft store I got these from Joann's but I know Michael's Crafts also uh, sells them um, for a four pack it is a bit pricey in my opinion um, I think it's like $18 or $17.99 um, for one pack with four different colors and it comes with it's called perfect medium which this is these are not made as a cosmetic but like I said I don't like to spend a lot of money so I go online and I research stuff and find out what products are made of whether you should or could use them on your skin so Anyway, um, you can use the Perfect Pearls powder, but you cannot use the Perfect Medium because, for one, it smells like crap, and for two, um, it's not for skin. And anything that you see me make or talk about making, um, if you do this at home, that's your problem, not mine. Um, I would say if you're going to do that, Always test it on your skin 24 hours prior to using a full application of any kind of product. Even even if it's a product that you bought at a store, let's just throw out a name um, like, let's say, Revlon or Sephora. Any new product you're putting on your skin, you should always, always test it. And the best place, I think, to test is on this part of your wrist which I have a tattoo there. That's for my daughter, Laura, and that's for my son, John. But anyway, I think that's like the, um, the closest thing that you're going to get to your face. Um, so that's why I test there. But anyway, um, I want to show you how to use this uh, Perfect Pearls as a lipstick. Um, again, glycerin is amazing, but this one, I have this one mixed with witch hazel, and witch hazel, it's got a weird taste to it, and I wouldn't recommend putting it on your lips. Um, eyeshadow, maybe, lips, no. So, again, I have my handy dandy brush, and I'm just going to dip it into a little bit of water. And what I did is I shook it up really good before I opened the lid to make sure that there was some on the lid. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this brush that has a little bit of water on it. Am I recording? Okay. And I'm just going to dab it. Dab it around my lid. And then apply. I love, I love shiny colors. Oh, I love it. That's a pretty color. And if you're applying it the way that I am with just a little bit of water, I would actually I probably wouldn't do that. Normally I wouldn't do that, but that's all I've got like um, handy right now. I would probably use Vaseline because um, I'm pretty sure that once this dries, it's going to feel weird on my lips. But, oh wow, it's so pretty. I love it. So, the next thing I want to show you really quick, and then I'm done for the day, and then I'm going to go watch football with my husband. Not really. <laughs> but it sounded good. <laughs> Clean off your brush. Just to get a little pop on your um, lipstick or lip gloss or whatever. Same thing. I'm using a wider color. And I'm just mixing it around the top with a little bit of water. I'm going to go right in the center of my lip. Just draw a little line, and then right at the Cupid's bow, Hold it. 
There you have it. And you could do that with any color, to be real. So, I think I'm done. So, I think I need to clean all of my brushes. Always, 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 always clean your stuff. Otherwise, you're going to get an eye infection or a lump on your throat or um, your eyeball's going to fall out. Um, your hair's going to turn orange. Always clean your brushes, always clean your brushes, always clean your brushes. And the best way to do that is boil them. First of all, wash them with soap and water. And then um, boil some hot water and drop them in there for a good 15 minutes. Sterilize them and then dry them off with a nice little towel or like I do like this. I just pop them like this and get the water out of them. So that's pretty much it. I guess I'll just come back and take my hair down and... Okay, so pretty much this is my look for the day. Just chilling at the house with my husband and my kids, which happens to be my favorite thing to do in the whole world. So um, I guess it'll be uh, eight, nine videos. And I'll throw them all together as one, and then I'll also um, post them as um, separate videos because I did a lot of stuff today. I did the lips, the eyes, da, 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 da. so yeah, um, definitely. So anyway, um, that's it for today, and I will see you guys um, do, 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 probably tomorrow because I I still got a lot of reviews, a lot of reviews to do. Right? Are you gonna help me tomorrow? Yeah. You sure? You wanna come in and say hello to everybody? Hi. Say hi, Facebook. Hi, YouTube. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Shaw Skank Redemptions. <laughs> Give me a kiss. I love you. You do. You sure about that? Mm -hmm. well, I'm not so sure. You should be sure. I can't see you. You should be sure. Do it in the camera. It's so cute. You should be sure. I love this girl. <laughs> I love this girl. What's your name? Cassie. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Yes, it's it Angel. Is. It's Cassie with stars in her eyes. Look, she's got stars in her eyes. Show, get up there close. Show them. She's got blue stars in her eyes. Am I crazy? I'm not! I try so hard to be crazy! Why can't you just say I'm crazy? Did you not? I love you. I said I love you! Bye-bye! <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe up there, down there, over there, over here. Um, hmm, where else could they subscribe? Oh, you can subscribe on, subscribe. Subscribe on Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, Facebook, my blog. Where else? Um, I don't know. Bluetooth or something. Bluetooth. It's like a little thing. <gasps> Bluetooth is for your phone. Oh, I see now. <laughs> you see.